posture always begins with the feet. It's your stance is another way to talk about it. Now, you remember there were four postures. The contracted posture, the expanded posture, the withdrawing posture, and the forward posture. The contracted posture, let's start with that. It involves contraction, the body being closed in on itself. And you assume the, the contracted posture, you start with your feet, cross one foot over the other like this. <laughs> now, um, the next thing you do is you take your hands, put them together so that your hands are contracted, and then hold them down here in the middle of your body. All right? So now your arms are contracted. Then take your shoulders and hunch your shoulders forward, let your chest sink in, and put your head down. Now your whole body is contracted in on itself. Right? Now, from this position, look up just with your eyes and look around at everybody else in the circle. <laughs> Now, what impression do you look at more than one person? Because you want to see if it's just maybe it's just oh that girl looks a certain way or oh that one guy. But see, see if it's a similar impression from the different people. Have you got a clear idea of what message this kind of posture sends? Now I, you can all drop out of it now. <laughs> just look at me now. When you see someone standing like this, what what impression do you get? What words come to mind? Scared. Scared is one. Insecure. Insecure. What else? Comfortable. Uncomfortable. Bathroom. What? Bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wants to hide. Yeah, wants to hide. Well, the words that came up in James' study were a little more elegant. Dejected. Does that sound right? Depressed. Insecure. Timid. Is that about right? Now, did, you, did, did anybody, when you looked around the room, did anybody who was standing this way seem very happy and alive? And, I mean, were there different? That's pretty general, isn't it? Let me ask you, is this a message you want to send to your audiences when you give your attention? No. That's not what you want to tell them. That's not the impression you want them to have. That is not the values you want to stand for. So the next time you're doing a presentation, here's the interesting thing. The research that was done in the 70s and 80s started to address the question, well, you know, what if you only do a part of one of these postures? What if you just hold your hands together like this, but the rest of your posture is in that way? Does that, what, what, how does that work? James suggested, well, it depends on what people focus on. You know, some people are just arbitrarily going to notice legs more. Or some people will notice hands more. People who notice hands more, they'll, they'll, they'll get this message. They'll get this sense of you from that. Now let's take a look at, so that's, that's the contracted posture, and it's a good one to avoid, so I recommend you screen out any of this behavior. Crossed legs, crossed hands, arms hunched forward, head down when you're doing the presentation. Because to the extent your body is in, any part of your body is in that posture, it's going to give that sense. But now let's take a look at the second posture. Okay? You don't want to do contracted. How about the expanded posture? Well the expanded posture is the opposite. Separate your feet up like this. It's called legs of Kim. So then put your hands not out like this, but on your hips or your elbows. Now stick your chest forward as far as you can and get your chin up. This is the expanded posture. Now chin forward, your chest forward. Now when you see someone standing like this, what kind of message is that? Sir? What kind of impression do you get from something? You can drop out of it now, I'll just say. I'm teaching this course. What does this say? Mr. Know It All? What's that? Mr. Know It All? I know. Arrogant. Arrogant. What else? Aggressive. Aggressive? Yeah. What kind of occupations do people stand with? Uniforms. Military types? American cops. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a message you want to send to your audience? No. That you're arrogant? That you're aggressive? No. And now I, I sometimes will work with people and you'll get a mix. This is the second question that comes up. Well, what if like, my legs are like separate and I have my hands together? Does this like neutralize it? <laughs> okay, so I'm balanced out? Or, or does it like go up and back like, you know, sadomasochistic, like I'm partly submissive and I'm partly aggressive? The best answer seems to be that if you mix the signals, you create confusion. They did an experiment with therapists. This were sitting, psychotherapists, and they'd have the psychotherapist sit 
in one posture, like the withdrawn posture, like that. And which you know, you've seen therapists, you've seen people sit this way. And then whenever the therapist gestured, he'd gesture out of another posture, like he'd do a forward gesture, and then he moved it. And when there was an inconsistency between the basic posture and the gestures, people had less trust in the therapist. And when they were consistent. So like this, if the therapist at least just went like that and did sort of like withdrawn postures, at least that made sense to people. People don't like the dissonance. Got two to eliminate now. The third one, the withdrawing posture. Now, the withdrawn posture is withdrawing, turning away from whoever's in front of you. So you want to turn towards the outside of the circle. Start it with your feet again. Place your feet so that the bottom part of your body is turned away from the inside of the circle. Then put your hands across your chest like this, cross them, and turn your upper body even further. And then just look back into the circle over your shoulder. This is the withdrawn posture. Okay? If you see someone with this aspect, what does it seem to communicate? Look around the room, look at the different people. You see someone standing like that, and all you know about them is this posture. What does it tell you about them? What's that? Doesn't want to be there. Doesn't want to be there, yeah. Uh, Stina, ask me if I'll loan you 100 kroner to take a taxi home tonight. Can, you, can you please loan me 100 kroner so I can get a cab? Yeah, home? sure. <laughs> <laughs> I really hey, don't believe you. you. No, exactly. <laughs> now, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but um, that's the withdrawn posture. It conveys the attitude of negation or refusal or flight. And in James's study, people were using words like, uh, it, the figure looks like it's uh, revolted or disgusted by what's in front of it. Mm. Does avoiding eye contact uh, come into that? You see, eye contact is a gesture. You know, uh, what you do with your eyes is a gesture. It's what you're doing. So when you look away, yeah, that's a gesture of flight. But when you look down, that's a contracted gesture. It goes like with the head going down. Yeah. Look, we're not robots. People change postures and positions. But if you are consistently doing any of the parts of these three postures, you're going to constantly be sending this message. We have three postures not to use, right? So I'm going to show you how to do it. Right? Forward posture. This, there were two words that came out again and again in James's study when people saw a figure in a forward posture. Now, the first word was interesting. It looks like the figure is interested in what's in front of it. The second word was approach. It looks like the figure is approaching. Or, sometimes they said, it looks like the figure is approachable. Are those messages you want to send to your audience? Yeah. I'm interested in you. I, I want to approach you, and you can approach me. Certainly vastly preferable to the first three messages. And you've only got four choices. <laughs> Let me show you how you do the forward posture. These things are all extremely simple, and this is the simplest of them all. Your feet are parallel to each other, and one is a little bit in front of the other. Arms forward. Chest a little bit forward. Now, if you want to know how to get your chest a little bit forward, not this of the expanded posture, how do you get your chest forward without it being expanded? I'll tell you how, and this is, this is key. This is extremely powerful. Have one foot in front of the other. Put your weight in your heels. Get your weight solidly in your heels. Now, you notice how the upper part of your body leans back when the weight's in your heels? In the withdrawn posture? This is the part of the withdrawn posture. From the position with your weight in the back of your heel, move your weight forward onto the balls of your feet. Notice how your upper body just comes slightly forward? And do you notice how when you're on the balls of your feet, your whole body gets looser? This is how athletes stand, right? You know, if you play any sports, if you play tennis, if you play football, anything like that, when you're on the pitch, when you're on the tennis court, you're not back on your heels. You're always on the balls of your feet. And as soon as you do it, it sends this message to the brain to, we're going into action. And the whole body gets livelier. In addition to that, it gets the upper part, part of your body forward. This is the forward posture. This is how you bring your body to life in a presentation. 